Now, now Howard, there, there is this misconception, especially in sort of a, a more jaded movie crowd, that all the effects you see now are digital effects. CGI. They're CGI. And I think we've all had an experience of CGI that just looked bad. Oh. And we've also had the experience of, of seeing uh, uh, physical effects that look too good not to be digital. So how do you meld the two? Because you've, you've got to work in both realms. Absolutely. Well, well, nowadays, that's exactly it. You know, in the 80s, which was kind of the heyday of special makeup effects, it was, uh, you know, before digital effects. So it was all practical. Then when Jurassic Park came out, that kind of changed everything. And I remember sitting in the theater and I turned to my friends and I just went, we're extinct. Wow. But we, but we actually weren't because we decided that instead of, you know, dropping out of what we love to do or fighting them, we would join them. So when we do a movie, uh, for instance, like I did the Chronicles of Narnia movies, and, and that's a huge combination of, of what we do, special makeup effects combined with visual effects. So it's really kind of a magic trick. And, and, and I find nowadays, just because of the digital revolution as far as you know, what they're not shooting a lot of film these days. It's mostly, you know, 4K and 5K. Uh, they, everybody has issues, you know. So, because um, because that because the digital photography shows every little aspect yeah. of, of yeah. everything, every hiccup. So you now want to join forces with visual effects because there's things they can't do that they ask you to do and vice versa. So we work as one, we work as a team. And instead of how it was in the early days of visual effects where we were battling each other, now it's really about wh how do we achieve the director's vision, you know, and, and how do we make the, whole f the film as a whole work as far as the storytelling goes. And so the audience isn't pulled out of it like, oh, that's a terrible visual effect or, or that makeup effect is, you know, old school or what have you. So now, when you go see a film, it's a big combination of everything. Practicals are great, though, because they could fool you, because oh, you, yeah. suddenly it's real. And, uh, and uh, the choice to make BB-8 a real robot, mm -hmm. for instance. It's super cool. Really smart, because it, super smart. there's no question that's a physical object. Right. And, and well, it brings uh, yeah. it all alive. Well, I think this new Star Wars film has a lot of real stuff. I mean, J.J. Mm -hmm. J. Abrams wa wanted to be a makeup effects guy and decided, thank goodness, to be a great director and producer and writer. And um, he has a love for the practical effects world. So I, 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 uh, from what I understand, the new Star Wars film has a lot of real creatures in it, like the, the first Star Wars films. Or, or, or even, so like, for example, go to this summer, Mad Max. Yeah. Mad Max mm -hmm. had so much practical effects, not many digital effects, and it really dragged people in. So, so my question would be, how do you know where is the edge? What's the thing that right. makes a particular uh, a monster or a particular makeup effect pop versus become corny? Well, I've been doing this for 33 years, so I, I, I better know. Um, <laughs> you know. But the thing is, I always say we're like, we're, we're, you know, like the director's the, the, the chef, and we bring all the ingredients to the table. Yeah. And you hope that the chef will you know, end up making everything, you know, the right way, use it in the right way, or you're going to have a, you know, a deflated souffle. Um, but, you know, we really work as a team. It's not that we're vendors or anything like that. When, you know, you'll have directors that are very collaborative and you, you bring your skill and talent and expertise to the table and they listen and you're able to help maneuver productions to the, to get to the, you know, the final and best solution. So, but there's certainly times we're on set and I'm like, boy, this is the cheesiest thing I've ever seen. So, you know, just it's like, oh, it's well. Look good. <laughs> yeah, you just go, I didn't write it. <laughs> hey, what was it like working with Tarantino? That must be fun. It's great. Well, we've known Quentin for forever, since the beginning, before Quentin was famous. And we were friends with him. And we, uh, he did us a favor. And so part of the payback was if he ever got to direct a movie, we would do the effects oh, for free. So wow. one day he called and he said, hey, I got money to do this movie. It's called Reservoir Dogs. Oh, and like, my God. So, so, but we've been with him ever since. We've done every film with Quentin, and he's fantastic, and he's magnificent, and he's, he is a genius. He's a cinematic genius. And the cool thing about Quentin is he makes movies that he wants to see. Yeah. It's not a matter of like, oh, I think the audience is going to love it. I mean, of course, he, he hopes they do, but he's making movies that he wanted to see when he was growing up and, and even now. So that's why they're so cool, because the guy has so much you know, talent and style, and, and he just knows what's, he knows what's cool, and he hasn't failed yet. So, and I don't think he'll... He's going to fail at any time soon. You're going to work with him this summer, I understand. Well, we just did. We we did um, uh, Hateful Eight, which is, comes out Christmas Day. Oh, so uh, that was the last one we worked with him. We don't oh. know what he's got coming up next. Oh. So, oh, good. But, 
How exciting. And hateful. And, and that film was shot all on film. It was shot in 70 millimeter, which is unheard of. Do you prefer and, that? Oh, God, yeah. I wish that we'd just go back to film. I, I do not enjoy the digital filmmaking. So uh, the, 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 the HDR stuff we're seeing, the high frame rate stuff, that makes it, it hard for you, doesn't it? Well, I, I and listen, I, I just don't think it looks good. Yeah. I really don't. I, I don't it's feel... It's too real? It it's too real. And when you see a movie, it's it's a movie. You're you're supposed to get immersed in the in what's happening, the image, the yeah, adventure, the story. And it's just, it's too, I, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to sit and watch a movie and feel like I'm watching a sports event. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's a big problem with it. I just don't think it, JJ shot Star Wars on film. Interesting. And, uh, Christopher Nolan shoots film. Yeah. And Quentin shoots film. So it's, it's really wonderful. Once in a while you get that, you walk on set and there's a Panavision camera and you're like, this, they're shooting <laughs> this in film. This is fantastic. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of, of film and, it, and I'm old school, but. I just think it looks better. It's, there's a reason why it's called film. It's not called digital or video or, you know, I, I'm just not a fan. Yeah. Howard, you won an Academy Award for your work with uh, Chronicles of Narnia, and mm -hmm. you made this incredible, I mean, it's, it's the Chronicles of Narnia. You created mythical, fantastic The Minotaurs, beasts, The baby. Minotaur. Uh, <laughs> but my question would be, do I you find be a it? Minotaur when I grow up. Oh, I know. Who doesn't? <laughs> but do you find it more difficult to wow your audiences because they've seen it all? I mean, yeah. it would seem as if every movie you want to put another layer, another level, you want to pop it up a notch, and eventually yeah, no, you run out of gears, difficult. right? Yeah, absolutely. It's very difficult, you know. But you know, we try to raise. Well, we we always try to raise the bar, you know, at, at my studio at K and B Effects and, and everything we do and every show we work on. Um, you hope that the scripts that come your way do the same thing. And, and sometimes you, you'll read something and you just know it can be better. So you go with a, a plan and, and do a presentation for the director and the producers and hopefully uh, they like it and they go with it. And, and uh, you know, I think also the thing is it's not just, I mean, I love monsters. I grew up on monsters and I love all that stuff and, and being a makeup artist. But I love movies and that's really where it all stems from. Like I'm a movie fanatic Me too. I and, movies. and I watch movies all the time. I, yeah. I just, I love them. So I know what it takes. Nowadays, it's funny to be on a movie set and people, it's almost kind of, kind of hip, I guess, to say, oh, I don't really see movies. Oh. I just, I'm like, why would you, first off, you're full of baloney. Exactly. And, sec and second, you know, you're, you're not cool. And third, you should be seeing everything because you're in the film industry. Right. So that always, I think, is ridiculous because I, I go, my wife and I try to see at least two movies a week in the theater because mm. uh, it's, it's important. You know, yep. we want to support and support what we do. But come on, you got to be sick to death of making zombies. Like it's assembly line now, right? Zombie, <laughs> well, zombie, yeah, zombie. Zomb a lot of zombies. Well, luckily, <laughs> yeah, our, our, my studio, um, we handle The Walking Dead. And uh, Greg Nicotero, who's the end in K&B, oh. it's really his baby. I, I have very, very little to do with Walking Dead. But um, Greg is the executive, one of the executive producers, is the main director and handles the makeup effects on set with a great, great crew. And we have a great crew at the studio that work on it constantly making stuff and zombies and this and that and and I, I'm actually I'm a huge fan of the show so it's a I don't read I don't, it is I don't read the scripts and I, I don't want Greg to tell me what's oh, going on nice. but there's my son oh that's <laughs> um, great that's, uh, yeah, it's this little zombie uh, thing do I did. the actors but, must uh, enjoy or do they do they enjoy being zombies do they uh, well I think you know I think maybe well I find with any makeup tell you the truth they're you know day one is very very it's a exciting pain in the ass to and, put well on. yeah then after day one they're yeah. like this really blows yeah. you know yeah. um, you <laughs> know, I gotta sit so, there for yeah. three hours getting these getting these well yeah it's that on I mean you get the makeup on and then you you have to work all day, yeah. and then you have to get the makeup off, and then you do it again. Yeah. So I personally am not a fan of putting makeup on myself. No. You know? yeah. So any Halloween costume has no gluing, no makeup. nothing like that. Yeah. At all. Notice I'm not wearing any makeup at yeah, all. No, I am completely yeah. done up right now. <laughs> Are you? Wow. He's got heavy pancake on. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, but at the same time, and I remember Laurence Olivier said this: when you get the costume and you get the makeup, mm -hmm. you can become. It's like mask work. You mm -hmm. become Absolutely. that person in a very almost spooky, mysterious way. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do anything when you're when you're hidden behind something, right. you know. And and I like to work with actors that. Um, well, I mean, I always feel like I bring 50% to the table, and then the actor brings the other 50%. Because I can do a great makeup on a really not a really good actor and then it doesn't come you know it doesn't come to fruition right but i've been very very lucky where i have like i, I did this movie hitchcock Ooh. and i uh and that was with uh, sir anthony hopkins so i mean you know who better so i got I to do the makeup on, yeah, yeah i got the makeup on tony thank you i got to do the makeup on tony 
And of course, Tony brought it to life and there was, you know, his portrait of uh, Alfred Hitchcock. But that was us working together to try to find, you know, what was the best look and the best, what worked for him, what worked for me, what worked for the, the director and the studio. So it's, it's a big giant combination of, of, of different things. So.